Comprehensive Guide to Lisa, Dendro Edition. This past month and a half has been very transformative for Lisa. Whilst her kid hasn't changed much, the environment with which she lives in now has drastically improved, which in turn has been the rising tide that lifts her boat. So I'm not going to go through her entire kit again. If you need a full breakdown of her abilities, please go and watch the comprehensive Lisa guide, the original one, which may very well be one of the best videos I've ever made. Also, I'm going to discuss an upcoming character towards the end of this video, since I feel like I would be very remiss not to discuss Lisa and this particular character as well. That's going to involve leaks and spoilers and all sorts of shenanigans, so if you're not into that, then feel free to leave when I say I'm going to start talking about that character. Now that we understand Lisa's entire kit via the original comprehensive Lisa guide and what she already has to offer, let's begin. Elemental Mastery. One thing I didn't mention in the original guide is that Lisa's ascension gives her elemental mastery. Because most of the time, before 3.0, it was a rather meaningless stat for Lisa to have. It kinda helped Overload, it sort of helped Electro Charge, and of course it was completely meaningless in Superconduct. Those were the three reactions that Lisa had at the time. And if you were playing in any of the team comps that I was recommending, i.e. the Triple Electro Death Squad, Generally speaking, the EM wasn't particularly useful. But now, Lisa's Elemental Mastery Ascension stat actually means something. When you reach level 80 out of 90, or when you reach level 90, Lisa gets 96 EM as part of her ascending. This is the same amount of EM that all four stars who actually ascend with EM will get. For example, Sayu and Shang Lei. Kaz, on the other hand, being a 5 star, he gets about 10 EM more. This is useful because EM now factors into the extra damage that you get as part of your Dendro reactions, both of which are very useful. Because Lisa is an Electro character, she can trigger two Dendro reactions to do extra damage, being Aggravate and Hyper Bloom. I will often refer to Aggravate as Aggro, and Hyper Bloom is still Hyper Bloom. Aggravate cares about EM, damage percent bonuses, and crit, whereas Hyper Bloom only cares about EM, and Dendro Resistances. So if you're using the 4-piece Deep Dick set, then the Dendro Resistance coming from that 4-piece bonus is actually going to improve your Hyper Blooms. So with that, I'm going to start off with the easier reaction. Hyper Bloom! What? Yes, Hyper Bloom. So the great thing about Lisa is that Lisa's Lantern targets Dendro Seeds on the ground. So long as enemies stay near the Lantern, you can use other characters to pump out Seeds for the lantern to hit. Now, of course, if you remember from the original Lisa guide, the lantern does have a very random nature, and that random nature still seems to be a bit of a factor. This is something you're gonna have to keep in mind, especially if you don't have C4 Lisa. Alternatively, normal attacks and tap specials can also sometimes trigger the seeds. It seems like this may have something to do with the small AoE nature of these particular attacks, so you could potentially play Lisa Hyper Bloom Driver. If that doesn't work, then you can also use Lisa's charge attacks. Of course, Lisa's charge attacks being a gigantic line AoE, it's going to trigger all the seeds in that line. One thing worth noting is that Lisa's charge special won't specifically target seeds, but I have noticed that when enemies are close enough to a seed and they get hit by the thunderbolt of lightning from the sky, somehow the seeds get triggered as well, so there might be a little bit of AoE involved in that that is also triggering those seeds. Now a few things to keep in mind when you're playing Hyper Bloom as Lisa. ICDs don't matter. The Lantern has a standard ICD, but each time it hits a new Dendro Seed, it's as if it's triggering Hyper Bloom for the first, and let's be real here, only time. Which means it doesn't matter how many seeds are on the ground, so long as your Lantern is there, it will keep triggering Hyper Bloom, so that's of course really, really good. The faster you can produce seeds, the more Hyper Blooms you're going to get. That's the deal. Also, Hyper Bloom is a single target reaction. So, essentially, what I suspect to be the case is that if you use Hyper Bloom Lisa against the boss, you're probably going to be way more effective than if you use Hyper Bloom Lisa against a bunch of enemies. But that is less to do with the fact that it's Lisa and more to do with the fact that it's actually just Hyper Bloom. Okay, let's talk about Aggravate. Lisa can be a very powerful Aggravate character owing to not just Aggravate being a great damage amplifier for herself, but also because she has her lantern. Now for those who don't know, Aggravate occurs 
when an Electro Attack hits an enemy with a Quicken Aura, which is created by first applying both Electro and Dendro onto that target. I did an entire video on the numbers of how Aggravate works when the patch first dropped, but suffice to say, Aggravate increases her normal attacks, tap special, and her lambton damage in a much more significant margin, whilst her held special nukes, they can still benefit, but I feel like if you really want to play held special nukes, you're better off using someone like C6 Sara. With Aggravate, ICDs will actually factor into how she functions. The Lantern has its own standard ICD, so every three hits or every two and a half seconds or whatever the actual thing is, that is the ICD for Aggravate on the Lantern. However, the way that ICD works is that each quickened target has their own separate cooldown. What does that mean? It means that if your Lantern is hitting three enemies that are currently quickened, all three of them will get an aggro proc simultaneously and then all three of them will go on to that cooldown so if there happen to be a bunch of enemies and you manage to get quicken onto all of them the lantern could randomly target each enemy separately which in turn causes the lantern to do aggro procs constantly regardless of the fact that there has been less than three seconds since the last aggro proc for example this is the same with basically every single AoE Electro application, by the way. This is not something that is unique to the Lantern, but I just wanted to point out that the Lantern and multiple enemies is pretty good. Charge attacks also have a 0.5 second ICD, but honestly, it takes longer to even do that charge attack anyway. So you might as well think of the charge attack as not having an ICD. As long as you have stamina, you're going to get an aggravate proc out of using her charge attacks. Also, Lisa's normal attacks and her tap special, they both share an ICD. Now, it's this last point that I really want to emphasize because it's both a gift and it's both a curse. It's a curse that your normal attacks could prevent your tap special from getting an aggro proc. But it is also a gift if you want to force aggravate onto your tap special. If you just spam tap special, Every second, which is the usual cooldown for tap special if you're not using Sack Frags or Thundery Fury, it's every other hit that will trigger Aggravate. So, what can we do about that? Well, all we have to do is just weave in two normal attacks between each tap special. So, the combo that I am suggesting you have a try is to run tap special, normal attack, normal attack, tap special, normal attack, normal attack, tap special, rinse and repeat. You can actually get both normal attacks in before your tap special cooldown resets. Meaning the tap special, every second, is going to get aggravate applied to it. Which can be very, very good. Now, here's the thing. Because of the way that aggravate calculates its damage, it doesn't actually care about your talent ability damage. So, your DPS is not really increasing if you're forcing Aggravate onto your tap specials as opposed to just letting Aggravate run on your normal attacks. But there is a specific weapon that should you decide to use it, this particular solution can actually be meaningful. Now which weapon would that be? Well, since you're already asking, let's talk about weapons. I'll just talk about the weapons that I have this time because uh, there's still a bunch of weapons that I don't have and honestly I can't really comment on them all that much. But the weapon I was talking about is in fact a weapon I have and its name is Kagura's Verity, also known as Lisa's Best in Slot. Kagura's Verity, for those who don't know, is the weapon that comes with Yaimiko. Should Yaimiko be getting a rerun soon, then you have an opportunity to get Kagura's Verity. As Kagura's Verity gives Lisa's special a damage bonus, this is actually double dipped when Aggravate is aggravated, meaning the damage increase on her tap special is greater than that of her normal attacks, meaning the aforementioned tap special double normal combo will actually yield better results than just spamming your normal attacks, but not by a huge amount. If you want to have a better idea of what kind of difference we're looking at with regards to double dipping aggravate, I did a video about Seno and Yaimiko, you can check it out. The concept would also apply to Elisa using Kagura's Verity. Another weapon that is 
super good now. Not that it wasn't super good to begin with, but it was very good. And now it's super good is the Witsith. Because prior to 3.0, the EM bonus that comes with Witsith for Lisa was a bit of a meme. Again, like I said at the start of the video, EM wasn't terribly useful for Lisa, but now it is very useful for both aggro and hyperglue Lisa. 480 EM is truly no laughing matter. And Lisa's lantern doesn't snapshot EM bonuses, so you could potentially buff her lantern's hyper blooming after the activation with the Witsith buff. Otherwise, for aggro Lisa, you're generally aiming for the electro damage bonus buff. Otherwise, the EM and attack buffs are very similar. On my build with an attack sand, the EM buff is slightly better, but when I swapped over to an EM sand, I somehow ended up doing pretty much the exact same damage. So, you're kind of going to have to figure out what happens. I would recommend using Masanori as a test dummy. Also, keep in mind the Witstith does bring along a crit damage substat, and that will affect both Lisa's natural and her aggravate damage. So, that's going to be really, really useful for aggro Lisa. Sky Atlas is still a very reliable option for aggro Lisa, and it is the weapon that I choose to use anyway. Generally speaking, when the Witsith has a buff active, no matter what buff it is, it will outperform Sky Harp. But that only lasts for about 33% of the time, and that's assuming you are very much on top of your Witsith buff activations. The rest of the time, the Sky Harp will outperform the Witsith even with the crit damage substat. Obviously, of course, it could depend on your build, but if your build has a lot of crit damage, then absolutely Skyhop's going to outperform the Witsit. Solar Pearl! The damage bonuses provided by this weapon are real nice for aggravate. At least with my build, the aggros coming out of Solar Pearl are about as strong as the Skyhop aggros. But of course, when you're not doing aggro damage, you are going to be losing out compared to Skyhawk. The crit rate buff, on the other hand, does make it very reliable for aggro critting, so it can be a great alternative to Kagura's Verity. There's also Sack Frags. Sack Frags is now super useful for Hyper Bloom Lisa, because again, the EM substat is very useful for Hyper Blooms. You could also use your special ability twice because of the way that the sacrificial weapons work, which means that you can get your lantern back even faster. Although in my experience, you still need a bit of ER anyway, so you could still bring a battery like Dory, or you actually run a bit of ER on your substats. Let's just see what happens. Good luck with that. And finally, there is a brand new weapon by the name of Fruit of Fulfillment. It is a craftable weapon, so if all goes to shit, and you don't have any of the weapons that I just previously mentioned, then of course you can use the Fruit of Fulfillment. This is potentially super duper useful for Hyper Bloom Lisa, and let me explain why. It has an ER substat, which basically means you can get your lantern back faster. And on top of that, you may read the passive of the Fruit of Fulfillment and you think, oh, it's a bit crap because I'm losing attack for no reason, but here's the thing. Your lantern snapshots your attack, so when you lose attack after you activate the lantern, it's fine. What it doesn't do is snapshot EM. So, the fact that your EM is growing as a direct result of the passive of Fruit of Fulfillment will improve your lantern hyper blooms. So, that of course is very, very good. It means that your lantern by itself is still going to do about as much damage as your lantern would normally do. And as you continue to trigger more hyper blooms, those hyper blooms are going to get stronger. That's pretty good! I personally am yet to try it out because I haven't had the time or the resources to level up this particular weapon. But just reading it is actually giving me a level of confidence that it's going to be pretty decent if you don't have any of the other weapons. When you've chosen the weapon that you want to use with Lisa, you should also have a look at her artifacts. Now, pretty much the artifact set suggestions in the original guide can pretty much work really well with Lisa and Dendro shenanigans. But that being said, let's just talk about three sets. The first one is going to be Thundering Fury. Thundering Fury has a cooldown reduction as part of its passive, and that works with Quicken, Aggravate, and Hyper Void. It's one of the things that they quote unquote changed, quote unquote buffed, uh, when 3.0 dropped, because of course I had to, otherwise it'd be absurd if Thundering Fury didn't work with Dendro reactions. Hyper Bloom and Aggravate bonuses are also buffed by this set as written in the passive. 
it's probably at least his best in slot if you have really good artifacts on that set. Otherwise, you could just simply run two-piece attack, two-piece thundering fury, or two-piece thundering fury, two-piece EM. That should work out pretty well for you. There's also Thunder Super. Now, Thunder Super Lisa. Oh, that brings me back to the good old days. Here's the thing about Thunder Soother. Electro and Quicken can coexist during aggravation shenanigans, so Thunder Soother usually works. That being said, I have noticed that sometimes if you place Electro onto someone, but then you put Dendro on them, you trigger Quicken, but that also means you lose the Electro Aura. I mean, you're gonna need to apply Electro again if you want Thunder Soother to continue buffing your damage. But when it works, it's a damage bonus, so that's gonna be really, really good for aggravating. It's definitely a great set to use if you don't have a strong Thundering Fury set, and you can also farm both of them simultaneously. I suspect that damage-wise, you're probably going to need a bit more damage out of Thunder Soother, assuming your substats are equal, but how often is that going to happen? And finally we have the Gilded Dreams. Gilded Dreams is probably going to be the best in slot set for Hyper Bloom Lisa, although I'm not 100% sure about that myself. Especially if your Hyper Bloom Lisa is in a rainbow team, which I suspect Hyper Bloom Lisa squads are going to end up being when we talk about teams. Essentially, you're getting 150 EM for free when you trigger a reaction. That's pretty nice! But just keep in mind that every 8 seconds, one of your Hyper Blooms is not going to have that EM buff. This is also going to be the same if you're running Gilded Dreams on an Aggravate Lisa as well. Alright, speaking of teams, let's talk about teams. Now with the introduction of Sumeru comes a bunch of brand new characters, some of whom are pretty cool, and some of whom are awesome with Lisa. Now with Hyper Blue Lisa, currently, Dendro Traveler is pretty much an absolute must. Although if you can make Kole work, that's great as well, because Kole doesn't rely as heavily on her ult compared to DMC. There's also a character that I'll talk about a little bit later, it's the character that I was sort of hinting at at the start of this video, who is definitely going to be surpassing DMC, and I'm going to say probably will surpass Kole as well when she shows up. You're also going to need a Hydra character as well. As Hyper Bloom isn't a bloom reaction that kills you, you can choose to run Yelan instead of Kokomi. Or Xing Chu. You have a bunch of options. But if enemies are coming to you because you're in Spiral Abyss and it's the defend the bullshit mechanic, then Kokomi could probably still be a better option because that way you have Dendro MC's Flower, the Jellyfish, and the Lantern all in one spot, just Hyper Blooming everything around them. That could be pretty nice. Sucrose is also a great option to provide a shared EM bonus for Lisa. For aggro Lisa, I found that Lisa, Tignani, and another Electro character, and whoever for a fourth slot, make for a very awesome team. Electro Resonance will help you get energy for Lisa, and for Aggravate, you actually don't need constant Dendro application. So Tignari is my personal favorite. Because on top of that, Tignari is a spread burst carry, meaning you can also just do a ton of Dendro damage, and then at some point also apply Quicken. Whether it be through his grenade, or through his charge attacks, doesn't matter. Either way, when you have Lisa and Tignari on the field, they're both basically popping off regularly. And on top of that, because Lisa's Lantern has a defense shredding capability, then they're going to work really well together. There's also other electric characters that I've been liking on this team. A is cool, but I prefer personally Dory because Dory is a healer and she also has some really good battery capabilities to get Lisa's lantern back. Also Yai Miko is really really cool for a variety of reasons, one of which is that she does tons of damage. And then of course there's also Fischl. In this case I would be running a TOM Fischl. If you happen to not be running three Electro characters like I normally do, then Kaz is a great fourth slot, because he does provide a lot of damage bonus, which is going to double dip on Aggravates. As an Electro main, I personally like running a second Triple Electro Death Squad. So when I have the right in Inquisition taking Yai and A out of the pool of Electro characters to use, then I would personally be running Lisa, Dory, Tignari, and Fischl. 
Lisa can also be a great supporting character for Senno, provided that enemies are sticking around the lantern. If you're fighting a lot of melee enemies, just make sure you're actually sticking around the lantern. See, Lisa's lantern can stick around long enough to cover Senno's ult. Yes, it's not as long as Senno's ult, but enemies will still have the defense shredded for a long enough time after the lantern is gone that Senno's claws will still do more damage. With regards to running them in an aggravate team though, you're probably going to want to use DMC as opposed to someone like Tignani. I think that should cover just about everything I was hoping to talk about with regards to Lisa in Dendro. I hope this makes for a solid addendum to the original comprehensive Lisa guide. But before we call it a day, there is someone worth talking about who hasn't shown up in the game yet, but thanks to leaks we essentially understand how her kit is going to work. If you don't want to learn about this particular character until the official 3.2 livestream, fair enough. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Peace. But for everyone staying around, let's refrain from discussing her in the comments, okay? Because, you know, she's still not here yet. Spoilers, etc, etc, etc. So, Nahida. This is the second time I'm going to try and record this particular part of the video because the first time I think I went a little bit too long. I can see Nahida being a very powerful character in both aggro and hyper bloom Lisa teams. Essentially, we're looking at consistent and regular application of Dendro via her special ability. And because Lisa is an electro character, should Nahida actually use her ultimate, it's actually going to increase the attack speed of her off field Dendro application, which should be really, really good. We'll see how it actually ends up being. Apparently, her off-field Dendro application is not going to have an ICD, so it's going to be, hopefully, really, really good. Especially when you have a bunch of Electro characters on your team, thus buffing the attack speed increase. Essentially, will she make a huge difference to Lisa's experience with Dendro? Well, considering that she's essentially power creep Dendro MC, not exactly, but it's going to be a much better experience, in my opinion, than using Dendro MC. Because Nahida is also going to be a mage, you could potentially use her not just as off-field Dendro application, but also on-field Dendro application with her normal attacks, and thus turning her, at least in the Lisa team, potentially into a spread hyper carry as well. On top of that, because she's a mage, she also has access to something like Prototype Amber, and so far, as far as I can tell, she has a very cheap ultimate at 50 energy cost, which basically means she can actually heal pretty well as well, which means we do in fact have technically a Dendro healer. So with regards to the Lisa Nahida teams, well I can think of a few things right off the bat. For starters, let's go with an aggro Lisa team. I could definitely see something along the lines of Lisa, Nahida, and Tignari, and then potentially Dory if Nahida's not being a healer, or Yamiko if Nahida is going to be a healer. Double Electro, Double Dendro will give us some energy generation, some EM buffs, and the second level attack speed buff that comes from Lisa's special ability via her ultimate. So that should be really, really good. Alternatively, you can have Lisa and Nahida double teaming together to support someone like Seno because his particular ultimate takes quite a lot of field time. On top of the aforementioned lantern synergies, Nahida's special ability actually lasts longer than Seno's ult, so that should be really, really good for him. So not only do you have the armor stripping capabilities of the lantern, you also have Dendro application from Nahida. And for Hyper Bloom Lisa, it could be something as simple as Lisa, Nahida, and Sucrose, and then either bringing Yelan if Nahida is healing, or Kokomi if Nahida is not healing. If you want to play on-field Lisa with Nahida, then there's another weapon that I think I could actually recommend pretty highly, and that is Hakushin Ring. Not only does Hakushin Ring provide you with an energy regeneration substat, but when you trigger a reaction whilst Nahida has her off-field Dendro application, in theory, and hopefully in practice, both you and Nahida, as well as any other Electro or Dendro characters in your team, will be getting a damage bonus, which of course is going to be very important if you're trying to play Aggravate Spread Lisa Nahida shenanigans. One of Nahida's passives is actually an EM share when she uses her ultimate, so then whoever has the most EM in the team will then share 20% of their EM to whoever is on the field. Because you're bringing someone like Sucrose, who's generally speaking built to have tons of EM, well then that should be quite a big EM bonus to whoever is on field. Sucrose of course being built with full EM, Sacrax for example, should be able to give around about 200 EM thereabouts depending on your build to let's say Hyper Boom Driver Lisa. 
Also means you don't necessarily have to build a huge amount of EM on Nahida. But we'll see what happens when Nahida comes out. Thanks for watching everyone, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye!